Okay, we have something kind of strange today. We've got the integral from minus two to two, x squared dx. And you may think this is just way too easy and simple. The only interesting thing here is I did this two different ways and got two different answers. And so what I want to do is kind of look into that problem. So what I want to do here is look into why I'm getting two different answers and what we can do about it. So to get started, let's just do the most straightforward thing. I'm just going to go straight to power rule on this. Now you could use even functions to change the lower bound to zero. I'm not going to bother just because this is a very simple case. So we're doing power rule. We get x cubed over three, evaluate. Plugging in two, we're going to have eight over three minus, this minus two is going to give me a minus eight over three, minus times minus is plus, and we have our solution 16 over three. Okay, now method two, let's see where I can get into some trouble on this one. I did for this a u substitution, even though of course it's not necessary and it's kind of weird, you're still allowed to do a u substitution whenever you want, or you're allowed to try anyway, right? So I'm gonna try u substitution on this for x squared. Let's solve for a value for x before taking a derivative. So we end up with x equal to square root of u. Take a derivative, derivative of square root of u, this is gonna be one over two square root of u du. Go ahead and substitute this first, plugging in two someplace. So first plugging two in right here, we have two squared or four. Next, plug in minus two, minus two squared, also a four. Then we do our x squared is gonna be u, and we have all this other stuff, one over two squared u du. And then next I could go ahead and simplify this if I wanted to, but it's not really necessary because you'll notice here, if we've got the same bounds, four to four, the whole integral has to be zero. And so we get our solution and this is just zero. And that's fine, that's quick and easy, but the only thing is it doesn't match our first solution. Zero is definitely not 16 over three. So what went wrong and which answer is right? Now, what I wanna do is if we just briefly look at a rough graph of just our x squared, and our bounds are minus two to two, so we only care about it from, say, here, minus two to two. Well, just looking at the area under the curve, it's clearly gonna have some area right? We're going to have positive area on both sides. And so whatever this value is, it's clearly greater than zero. And actually, I'll tell you, there was nothing wrong with the first method. So 16 over three is correct. And we do a positive area. Zero is wrong. So what's the problem with the second method? Well, it comes down to the substitution is kind of fishy. And first check, we can kind of look at our x squared graph from minus two to two. This is not gonna be injective. It's not one-to-one. -one. It doesn't pass the horizontal line test. So this right here raises some red flags, but it doesn't actually invalidate the solution by itself. It really comes more from, in our substitution, if we did this more carefully right here, getting our x value, this is actually gonna be plus or minus square root of u. And it makes sense that we need to include negative values of x because our bounds include negative values of x. So that really needs to be there. If we do that, when we take our derivative, we really have a plus or minus here. And so when we do that substitution, doing this all carefully, now we've got a plus or minus in our integral. But then this right here is really a problem. When you have this situation, just because you've got the same bounds here, you can't just go ahead and put zero on it because you really need to look into this. This has to be valid before we can go ahead. So the way we can deal with our plus or minus is do this more carefully and break this up into two cases. So what I can do is take our original integral and break it up on zero in order to get in order to separate our positive and negative values before doing this same substitution. So to do this, we'll just go first from minus two to zero of x squared. And then for the next one, we'll go from zero to two x squared. And then we'll go ahead with this same substitution. Now, when you plug in minus two, this is still gonna be four. This will be zero. We end up with u. Now for this, we want the minus case here and here. So this is gonna be minus, here I'll put the minus right there for the moment, and we'll have this one over two squared to u, du. And then for the next one, x is always gonna be positive here. The derivative is always gonna be positive. So this one kind of works out the same as we had it before. This is just gonna be u over two squared to u. But then here I can use this minus sign to flip the bounds around. And sorry, this was a mistake, because when you square the two, it should be a four. So this one's gonna be a four as well. But then the nice thing here is we notice we've got two copies now of the same integral. So what we can do is combine those together and just kind of have a two up front over here. But then I can cancel two with one half here, divide square root of u into u. Now we're integrating from zero to four. This just becomes 
square root of u du. Go ahead and integrate this thing with power rule. This is gonna become u 3 halves, 2 thirds in front, evaluated from zero to four. Evaluating at zero is gonna be nothing. I just need to plug in four. So we're gonna end up with 2 thirds. Let's kind of break it up like, I guess I can write like this, right? Square root of four cubed. Well, the square root of four is two cubed is gonna be eight times two thirds gives me my final solution of 16 over three. So that's about all there is to it. I thought it was a really interesting case. This comes a lot, this comes up a lot more often with like sine x and cosine x because those repeat over and over again. So you get the same problem. We don't really ever deal with this with x squared, but I just thought it was kind of like a simple way to look at that same problem we have with sine x and cosine x. And just because the sine function and the cosine function repeat doesn't mean we can't do the substitution. But what you need is you need a unique value for x here. When you end up with this kind of plus or minus situation, when you don't have a single value for x, that's where you need to kind of break it up and be much more careful. Anyway, there you have it, kind of overcomplicating the x squared integral. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.